Hi, it's Rachel here from Offroad CC, and today we're going to be reviewing the Vitus Mythique 29 VRS. Now, we took a first look at this bike and it proved pretty popular, so I reckon there's quite a few of you that are keen to see how this bike rides. As ever, if you're keen to see more videos like this, hit subscribe so you get a notification. And if you like this video, then hit us a like. And if you've got any comments, or maybe you own one of these, or the 27 and a half inch version, tell us how you're getting on in the comments below. On with the review. So, as I said, this is the Vitus Mythique 29 VRS. So that's the 29er version of that new Mythique range, which is a range of 140 mil trail bikes from Vitus. You can also get the bike in the same specs, but on 27 and a half inch wheels. The bike that we have here is a middle of the range version. So this one comes in at 1449. You can buy a higher spec version for 1600 quid. And then there's also a lower spec version with slightly shorter travel. So that's a 130 mil bike um, for 1299. So as I've said, this is 140 mil trail bike. And actually there's not a huge amount of bikes with 29 wheels and 140 mil travel. So full suspension that are coming in at around the 1500 quid. So Vitus are kind of standing on their own here with this bike. There's similar ones, and we'll get to that at the end. Um, but when we're reviewing this bike, it's hard to find something to match it. So spec wise, this bike gets X-Fusion fork and shock. So it's got an X-Fusion slide 29 boost fork. That's a boost RC fork. And then an X-Fusion shock. That is a 02 Pro RL. The fork gets rebound adjustment and then a compression dial on the top and the shock gets again rebound damping adjustment and a lockout switch. Elsewhere there is SRAM Eagle drivetrain, so that's the SX version. There's Shimano MT401 brakes, you get a dropper post and also some quite decent tyres. So these has, this has Magic Mary on the front and a hand stamp from the back and they're from Schwalbe. And then lastly, the wheels are WTB ST i30 rims with um, Vitus own brand hubs. So how does that all that kit add up when you're riding the bike? Let's start off with the fork. Now I did have a few complaints with the fork and the shock, but when I then put that into perspective of the overall cost of this bike, they kind of pale in into insignificance really but we'll go through them. So the fork has 34 mil stanchions, which if you're looking at comparatively at other bikes, other bikes might come with something like a uh, Recon from the RockShox range or a Sector, which both have 32 mil stanchions, but these a slightly larger diameter at 34 mil, which should make them slightly stiffer. Now they do perform better than uh, RockShox Recon RL, but I haven't ridden the new sector, so I can't say how that compares. What I did find with this fork though, is that when I was riding it, I had to put in more air pressure than was suggested for my given weight. And I found the fork quite chattery over small bumps. I had to put in that extra air pressure just to make the fork more supportive in the mid travel. Um, but then I found that it was also spiking quite a lot. So as I went off big hits, you get quite a jarring feeling. and. I had a look inside the fork and you can add volume reducer tokens like you can in other forks from Fox and Rock Shocks. And I found that there was already three in here, which would probably account for the spiking. So I took one out and the spiking went away as such, but there was less support in the mid stroke. So if you balance up the two, I decided to stick that token back in, put up with the spiking and the, um, the feeling that it gave me over bigger hits, but when I went into steeper train, I got a bit more support in the mid travel. Again, with the shock, little chatter over small bumps, I actually ran this with 25% sag, um, which then kept support in the mid stroke when I was cornering. Um, and it's just another trade off. So when opted for a bit more support, but you get a little bit of chatter over the roots. As I said, you then have to remember the price of this bike and you're getting decent kit on a bike for 1500 quid or 1449. So onto the drivetrain, let's look at a few pros and cons of the SRAM SX. So it's quite a heavy kit, but actually this bike weighed in at just over 32 pounds. So it's obviously not affecting it that much. 
There's no matchmaker compatibility with a Shimano brake, so you've got lots of clamps up at the front here, but if you don't mind the aesthetics of that, it's straightforward, little bit clunky gearing, but you get a massive range, which I think that beginner riders are really gonna benefit on when they're winching up hills. I know that just in the few years that we've been riding Eagle drivetrains, I miss them when they're not there. <laughs> Moving on, the brakes. These Shimano MT400 401s are pretty entry level brakes and they feel pretty wooden. They're reliable, but there's no feel down the lever and I just felt like I was hanging onto them um, in order to slow down. You can't really sort of modulate them on and off so well. They are reliable though, and they do bring you to a stop. With regards to wheels and tires, it's a half decent width of wheel and rim. So they're STI 30s, which means there's a 30 mil internal width. Now, these have got 2.35 tires on, but that width of rim should set you up to run wider tires if you wanted to in the future. These are the um, orange labeled Addix compound. Um, so that's the soft com compound from Schwalbe, which is great front and rear. The only thing you have to be aware of with these tires is that they are the snakeskin um, sidewall. So these are a little bit thinner than super gravity. And if you're riding it hard, you might find that you're a little bit more prone to punctures. It's just something to be watched out for, but in terms of the compound and the tread pattern, these are ideal for UK winter slop. Elsewhere, you've got a pretty much nuke proof branded um, cockpit. So that's bars, stem and saddle, which actually isn't on the bike at the moment. I changed it because the nuke proof one is awful. Um, it's super uncomfortable. The last thing that we need to mention is the dropper post. So this is a medium bike and this is 125 mil dropper post, which is slightly shorter than you might expect of a bike, of a trail bike, especially a 140 mil one. The reason that this is a shorter dropper post is because there's actually not a lot of insertion room. So there is not a lot of room before between where that rocker linkage sits on the seat tube and the top of the seat tube. Given that these Brand X Ascend dropper posts are quite long, this is actually only far as I can get into the frame. Now, it was fine for me, but shorter riders aren't going to be able to take advantage of the full length of that dropper post because this is as far as it goes in. And obviously, if you were to fit a longer dropper post, the post itself has a longer overall length and therefore less insertion. So this up until the collar will stick out even further. It's just something to be aware of. It's not the same overall bikes. It's simply because of the insertion room that's left on this Vitus, given this lock, rocker link. I would expect usually to see a longer dropper post however not that it affected my riding so much but there are times when the going gets steep and because that dropper post is only dropping 125 mils you can just feel that saddle hitting you in the bum sometimes for these bikes the small size gets 100 mil dropper and then the large this is a medium bike the large bike gets 150 mil dropper so after all that spec chat i guess you want to know how the bike rides and we will start with its climbing ability I was genuinely surprised how well this bike climbs. I found it quite effortless and it's really efficient. So the bike weighs 32.4 pounds, which is 14.7 kilos. And I think that's relatively light for a bike of this price. It's a comfy place to sit and winch out the miles. The effective seat angle is um, 75 and a half degrees. So it put me in quite an pos effective position to be pushing down on the pedals. And the top tube isn't wildly long. So on this medium, it's the effective top tube is 602 mil. So I didn't feel that stretched out and it's easy to move your weight about as you're climbing up steeper terrain and more technical steeper terrain. Another word on climbing, the suspension doesn't really bob when you're pushing down on those pedals either. So it makes it really efficient. You're not losing and zapping that energy away from you. When things turn downhill, this is a super fun bike to ride. I've taken this on all my normal test trails and it's coped with them all admirably. We've done all day cross country rides, which because of that efficient climbing, it's really easy to just spin out miles and miles. I've also taken it down some gnarlier, steeper terrain. Um, and the only problem really that I found there was obviously a little bit of lack of support in the fork and the brakes. Rather than the geometry of the bike being any hindrance, um, the brakes really let this bike down. And I think that would be the first thing that I upgrade if I was gonna be riding it on steeper terrain and really putting those brakes to use quite a lot. With regards to that geometry, this has a 66 degree head angle and the reach on this medium is 445 mil. So it's not going to scare anyone off of being super progressive, but it's not super regressive either. It's a back middle of the road um, and 
I would say sort of bang on average for this sort of bike. 445mm reach on a medium is a bit shorter than my, I might expect, but if we just put all of those figures out of our head and think what I felt like to ride the bike, I felt super comfortable on it. The head angle I reckon could be a little bit slacker, so it would just give riders more confidence when they're descending on a steeper terrain. All in all, this really is an all-round package. It's a bike that will go on XC missions with you and ride trails and it's gonna be easily upgradable in the future. So if 1500 quid is your ceiling price, but you know there might be wiggle room in the future, it's a really good one to look at. Things that I'd change at the moment and maybe my first upgrades, brakes. I'd get a more powerful set of brakes on this and you don't need to spend loads. Um, I think something like a pair of guide REs, so that's a four pot brake coming at about 80 quid an end and that would be a great upgrade. The other little niggle with this bike is obviously the lack of insertion, so only being able to fit shorter dropper posts. There is dropper posts that have a shorter overall length, so you might be able to find something else that is shorter overall and allows you to put a 150mm drop in there. With regards to this bike's competition, as I said at the start, there's not a huge amount of bikes out there. So you could look at something a little bit more expensive and obviously much more trail orientated. The Calibre Sentry is two grand, 29er still. Um, I'm just going to focus on the 29ers um, for the comparisons. But obviously that bike is a lot longer travel and 500 quid more, which is quite a hefty chunk considering 1500 quid might be your ceiling price. Uh, the other thing that is from the same range the caliber boss nut is new but 650b so that might not be on your cards if you're looking for a 29er um, similar length travel similar intentions and then 300 quid less that one's about 1100 quid the most comparable is the marin rift zone one so we've reviewed a marin rift zone two at 1800 quid but the marin rift zone one comes in at 1445 and it's got a really similar spec so you get a rock shocks fork with that bike the same shock but only an 11 speed drivetrain, whereas this comes with 12 speed. But that bike is 29er, 125 mil travel at the rear, so it's still a short travel trail bike, and it's the next nearest comparison that I can think of. To summarize though, Vitus have nearly hit the nail on the head with this bike. It's a great all round trail bike. It's gonna do lots of things. It's accessible to newer riders. It's easily upgradable. And then there's just a, a couple of niggles which we change, maybe a little bit longer reach, slacker head angle, better brakes, and this um, drop post niggle. But I don't think they're gonna be too much of a worry and not too much of a barrier for people looking for a really great all-rounder. There's gonna be more in writing on Off-Road CC, so check that out. And in the meantime, thanks very much for watching.